Hello, thank you for watching our channel. Help us spread God's love by liking this video. Subscribe to continue learning more about God's love towards you. And don't forget to click the Q bell. Because you are super blessed and blessings are chasing you down, you have more than enough to supply their needs. And this is the whole point. That's the reason that God wants you to be prosperous so you can supply your need and also the need of others. Hello, beautiful people created and loved by Almighty God. Welcome to God's Love Message, the place where you will hear the good news about God's love towards you. My name is Sadie Lynn Ortiz, and I'm here to let you know that God loves you. Yes, you are loved by God. God wants to have a love connection with you. Isn't that beautiful? But are you ready to have a love connection with Him? Today's topic is Trusting the Lord with Your Money, Part 2. I strongly encourage you to watch part one so you can fully understand how to trust God with your money and you fully understand today's lesson. We've been talking about trusting God with the tithe and offerings. And we also talk about tithing is not a money issue, but a heart issue. What do I mean? When you trust God with your money, the money that he has blessed you, you trust him with your heart. You trust him with your whole heart that he will supply all your needs, wants, and desires. That's why it's not a money issue, but a heart issue. If you trust God with all your heart that he will supply all your needs and wants, then you freely give it with all your heart. It's so easy to give it because first of all, it doesn't belong to you, but you love God with all your heart. That money is not your God. The Lord God Almighty is your God. So we talked about that tithing is not a money issue, but a heart issue. People that don't tithe, that don't give their 10%, don't trust God. They think that they can supply their own needs and wants and desires. That doesn't make any sense. When you have the creator of the universe living inside of me, if you have made him the Lord of your heart, the Lord of your life, of your whole life, then it's easy to trust him that he will take care of you, right? Because he's the one that created you. So it doesn't make sense how many Christians a long time ago, I did a research and I found out that 97% don't tithe. People that call themselves believers, only 3% of us tithe. Can you imagine that? What? I know it is very ridiculous to think that people that call themselves Christians don't trust God with their money. It doesn't make sense. So that's the reason that tithing is not a money issue, but a heart issue. It's a condition of the heart. When you give God your heart, you give him your money too, your finances, everything that belongs to you. When you put God in his word, first place in your life, the abundance of the Lord is all over your life. It's all over your family. Why? Because you are choosing to make him the priority in your life. Let's take a look at 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? God wants you to be abundantly blessed, abundantly blessed. Under all circumstances, it says, and whatever they need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid of support and furnish in abundance for every good work. Last week, we talked about the tithe being 10% of your income, right? Let's take a look at Leviticus 27:30. Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. I like the way Pastor Bill Winston put it. A tithe does not become a tithe when we give it. It becomes a tithe when we get it. 
the moment we receive a paycheck, it becomes a tithe, not when we bring it into the house of God. That is very clear, huh, what he says. The tithe, when you have God first thing in your life, first thing in your heart, when you love God with your whole heart, and he has first place in your heart, in your life, you know you're gonna be given the tithe when you get your paycheck. You're not wondering, oh, I'm not gonna give my tithe this paycheck. No, it doesn't even cross your mind. Did you get your stimulus check? Some people got stimulus check. They're planning on spending it. They're planning on spending that money. But what about giving the tithe to the Lord from that stimulus check? You were not expecting that, right? Were you expecting a stimulus check from the government? Not everybody received that check because you had to qualify. But if you got that check, you have to give the tithe and the offerings from that money. That belongs to the Lord. We're gonna be talking about tithers' rights. There are certain rights that belong to people that give their tithes and offerings. And these are tithers' rights. We're gonna read Malachi 3, 8 through 12. You people are robbing me, your God. And here you are asking, how are we robbing you? You are robbing me of the offerings and of the 10% that belongs to me. That's why your whole nation is under a curse. I am the Lord all-powerful and I challenge you to put me to the test. Bring the entire 10% into the storehouse so there will be food in my house. Then I will open the windows of heaven and float you with blessing after blessing. I will also stop locusts from destroying your crops and keeping your vineyards from producing. Everyone of every nation will talk about how I have blessed you and about your wonderful land. I, the Lord, all-powerful, have spoken. Tither right number one, provision. We just read right here in Malachi that it says, I challenge you, I challenge you to put me to the test. Bring the entire 10%. And then what's gonna happen? I will open the windows of heaven and flood you with blessing after blessing. Last week I showed you, and that's the reason I want you to watch part one so you don't miss anything. I showed you how the blessing of the Lord looks and I had a cup with the water and it was flowing. It was flowing with the water. And that's how the blessing of the Lord, when you put him first by putting the tithe, you give it with all your heart because it's no longer yours, right? The 10%, the blessings of the Lord, they're overflowing in your life. And so I really want you to watch the whole video part one so you can see that demonstration. And that's what he says here. I will open the windows of heaven and float you with blessing after blessing. This is a result of you putting God first by giving the tithes. Supernatural overflow and abundance is a result of being a tither. You just can't help it. The blessings of the Lord are totally chasing you down and overtaking you all the time when you put God first and you don't steal from Him. Let's read Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Honor the Lord by giving him your money and the first part of all your crops. Then you will have more grain and grapes than you will ever need. Did you notice this verse? It says the first part, the first part of all your crops, of your all your income. Let me read the Amplified Version. Honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labors with the first fruits of all your income. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty. With how much? With plenty. And your vats shall be overflowing with new wine. What are vats? That is a wine press. It's a large, huge container that they used to press the grapes and then it will go into this pipe to release the wine juice. So it says, your vats shall be overflowing with wine. That's how much you press, you press the press for the grapes, right? And it's so much juice, so much wine, it's overflowing with wine. That's what a vat is. But obviously I am not a winemaker, nor do I drink wine. However, what is the equivalent of a vat for us? A large container. Well, you can say that a, a bank account, right, is your vat. You're gonna have this huge container where you store your money. And then from there, the money, whatever you need money for, you're gonna withdraw from your account, right? And so your bank account is gonna be a huge bank account. You can have several millionaires don't have one bank. I've heard millionaires 
or multimillionaires, billionaires, they don't have one account. They have lots and lots of accounts. That is overflowing. Another way you can say a vat is, or a huge container to store money, is a container. You can have a safe, safe deposit in the bank, a safe in your house. I have different containers that I like. This is a container I just showed you. See, money is stored here. And this I actually got in Cuba. This is a Q box. See, I love to collect boxes, not just hats. Just like my hats, my boxes are also cute. See, it says uh, puros habanos cubanos, 100%. I'm guessing this is where they have the Cuban cigars, but I'm not sure about that but I'm guessing. So this is a cute little box that I have from my travels that you can use it to store money. Let me show you another one. This is another cute box that I have around the house. Look at how cute that is. This is so cute. Hello, that's the reason I bought it. Or should I say my husband bought it? <laughs> so this box is from India. Look at how beautiful. This is like a cute treasure box or treasure chest, right? Look at how cute. So you can store, if you have um, little boxes, you can store money and God is gonna supply all these different types of vats or presses, right? Containers, that's my point, containers. Cute, right? Let me show you another one. This is another box. This is a beautiful, beautiful box. Let me show it to you. See, it comes with the little legs and it's all wood. It's all carved. Look at the beautiful craftsmanship. This beautiful box, I bought in Nicaragua, where I'm from. And I just love the craftsmanship of beautiful boxes. And of course, as I travel around the world, I always look for beautiful boxes. I just love the craftsmanship. I appreciate that type of labor. And it says right here, I don't know, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Can you read it right there? It says Nicaragua. You see the craftsmanship? Look at how beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Right? This is so beautiful. This is another vet right where you can store money a huge container well it's not huge but you know you know what i mean right this is another place where you can store money right and it's so beautiful you can store a lot of things in here god wants you blessed in every area of your life let me show you another container where you can store money this is another container right that god wants your purse, your whatever you use. This is a backpack. I actually bought this in Cuba. You can see it, see? I bought it because I love all these little containers that it has, little pockets, see? I left this one open because you actually had to undo it. So it's not that easy. It's not one of those that you just press and it's magnetic. This one you actually, is, is uh, pretty secure. And so pocket here, pocket here is leather is beautiful see it's nice and I love because it reminds me of Cuba and um, everything is leather see it's beautiful it's leather and um, it's a backpack see so whatever you use to have money where you put your money right God wants them to be full, overflowing. Let me show you another one. This is a purse I purchased in Cyprus a few years ago. It's beautiful. See, it's interesting every time you go somewhere, you find something interesting from that particular country. And then this is another place where you, God wants your purses, your wallets, everything to be filled. So you are lacking nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, 
I shall not want. There should not be any lack in your life if the Lord is your shepherd and you put him first. So you have your purse and it's filled with money because that's the way God wants it. And your wallet inside your purse, this I purchased in Jamaica. Can you see it? In Jamaica. Beautiful craftsmanship, beautiful. All done by hand, I think, because it looks handmade. I don't know if they're gonna use a machine for this because it's so beautiful. And there, there's different pockets, different pockets that you can store your money. God doesn't want you to go to the store, right? You have your cute purse. Oh, look at it, it matches perfectly. Look at how beautiful I'm matching. That's the way I like to go to the store. You're matching. So you go to the store and then you take out your wallet, right? And then it's empty. <gasps> God doesn't want you to go through that. That's not a good example. You don't make him look good. That doesn't make sense. If you are a believer and say, the Lord is my shepherd. No, God wants you to go to the store confident because there's plenty. There is more than enough in your bank account. There's more than enough in all your purses, your containers, the bank, right? So when you go to the store, he wants you to have more than enough, plenty. Not only for you to buy your groceries, right? You spend a few hundred dollars in groceries because the things have been going up. It doesn't matter if things go up, if God is your source, because there's more than enough. It's overflowing. So if things go up, it doesn't matter because God is the source of supply. He is your shepherd. And so he doesn't want you to just supply your needs at the grocery store, for example, but also how many people at the store you feel the need to buy for. I have done that before. And it feels really good when God presses in your heart to pay for somebody's groceries at the store. And then that person or persons at the store, they're gonna say, who is that person? See, you make God look good when you do that. He said, yes, that's my kid right there. And he supplies you more and more because you don't store it just for you. You are a source of supply. See, God gives it to you and you give to others. God gives it to you and you give to others. See, do you understand that? Good. Tithers right number two, protection. Let's read Malachi 3.11 again. I will also stop locusts from destroying your crops and keeping your vineyards from producing. This is what Malachi 3.11 says in the Amplified Version. Then I will rebuke the devourer, insects, plague for your sake, and he will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field drop its grapes before harvest, says the Lord of hosts. See, when you put God first and give your tithe, that's the first 10% from your income. He says he will rebuke the devourer, insects and plagues. That's coronavirus, isn't it? That's a plague. He will rebuke the devourer. If you are a tither, tither is right number two, is protection. He will protect you from all kinds of plagues, any type of plague, including coronavirus. Coronavirus is nothing to the Lord. He paid for our sins, sicknesses, diseases on the cross. That does no longer belong to us. When we put him number one in our life, it says that he will rebuke the devourer for our sake. If you take medicine and that medicine has side effects, they won't bother you. That won't be a problem when you take medicine because you take it in Jesus' name. See, you take the medicine in Jesus' name. You plead the blood of Jesus and you are protected. Let's keep reading. So he will rebuke the devourer, insects and plagues for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine drop its fruit before the time in the field. It's talking about miscarriage here. You won't have a miscarriage. But as we know, we live in a fallen world. Satan, John 10:10, 10, 10, came to steal, kill, and destroy. He tries to make people sick. 
he tries to kill, to steal, and to destroy. See? But God came to give you life in abundance to the full until it overflows. God brings life. Satan takes it. So if you had a miscarriage, that is not God's fault, nor is that your fault either. That is Satan's fault. He is the only one that came to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy your life. God came to give life and Satan came to steal life, steal, kill, and destroy. So if you had a miscarriage and you have been blaming yourself, don't. That's not gonna do any good, but it is God's purpose for you to prosper in every area of your life, including having babies, if you want to have babies. I believe this is gonna be a blessing to you. So let me give you a verse that talks about miscarriages and infertility because I know there's some of you out there that need to hear this. So let me give you the scripture. Exodus 23, 26. There will be no miscarriages or infertility in your land, and I will give you long, full lives. You see, it is not God's will for you to have miscarriages or infertility. It is not God's will. Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. He's the one that doesn't want you to have life, to carry life. And he's trying really hard right now in the government to kill babies, people having abortion legally. You see how hard he's trying? Because God wants people. He loves people. He wants people. And the devil hates people. He wants to kill them and destroy them. That's the reason people are killing the babies and they're being brainwashed saying, you're not ready. This was a rape. Oh, I'm not married. So many excuses. If you're pregnant, the baby is here. You don't need to abort that life. God wants you to have life and have it in abundance. But if you had a miscarriage, that is not your fault. God wants you to have a long life, you and your babies. The tithe is like an insurance policy. It protects everything you own and do. The enemy can drain your finances. Give God what is his and he will protect what's yours. Ooh, let me read that again. Give God what is his, the 10%, the tithe, and he will protect what's yours. That makes sense, right? Tithe is right, number three, promotion. Let's read Malachi 3.12. Everyone of every nation will talk about how I have blessed you and about your wonderful land. I, the Lord, all-powerful, have spoken. You will get the attention of nations around you when you give your tithe. Your business will increase because more customers will be attracted to you. See? Because remember, it will be overflowing with blessing after blessing. They will recognize the blessings on you and will desire to do business with you. Also, there is joy in tithing. Like I said earlier, tithing is not a money issue. It is not a money issue. Tithing is a heart issue. When you give it with all your heart, to the Lord because the 10% is not yours. It is very joyful when you give your time because not only God blesses you, but you are a blessing to others. And so it attracts customers to you. They love to do business with you because there's something about you that they like when they go to your business and your business starts prospering when you put God first. Show me a tither and I will show you a very happy individual. Did you enjoy today's lesson about trusting the Lord with all your money? Yes, if you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of all my sins. Help me walk with you every step of the way. Thank you for sticking with me every step of the way. Thank you for healing my body, my mind, my emotions. Help me how to handle money and put you first with my money, with my finances. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just said that prayer, congratulations. You now belong to the family of God. We're not done yet. We're going to continue part three because I still have more to cover. Don't forget to give us thumbs up. Subscribe to continue learning more about how to trust God with money, with your finances, with your body, with your health, with your family, in every area of your life, because he loves you. 
All he wants is to have a relationship with you. So don't forget to subscribe and click the cute bell. And remember, you are loved, you are needed, you are wanted, you are a masterpiece.